We've been talking about the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope for a full year now, and well, it's finally launched. I know, for a while it just felt like it would be delayed into oblivion. Not only has James Webb launched, but it's also fully unfolded and ready to take on the universe. Well, almost. So let's go ahead and jump into the updates surrounding what will hopefully be the next step in the evolution of astronomy. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Ego Trip, and this is Science Get. The James Webb Space Telescope unfolded its primary mirror as of January 8th. Now, at a glance, that might not seem like a big deal, but it totally is. According to NASA, the danger didn't end with the telescope leaving Earth's gravity well. No, this was one of the most intricate deployments in the history of the space program. Compounding the risk factors, James Webb is the largest space telescope we've ever tried to launch into space. But we're not out of the woods just yet because the telescope still has quite a ways to go before it reaches what's known as its insertion location. That won't be happening until January 23rd. The space telescope will be sliding to its eventual final resting place, which is in Earth's L2 Lagrange point. That's a whopping 1.5 million kilometers, 930,000 miles from the Earth. So this image here is probably the last time that human eyes will ever be able to physically see the telescope, at least for a really, really long time. There is a possibility that James Webb might not be able to reach this cosmic docking zone, but if it does, it will be in an ideal spot, because it won't have to spend very much of its fuel supply to stay in place. This is because of the near-perfect alignment with the Moon, Sun, and Earth, an orbital dance like the tango, but cooler and in space. However, before the telescope can get to unraveling the curtain of space and time, and consequently driving us all mad from the Lovecraftian horrors it unveils to us, it has a few other mechanical challenges to overcome as well. First, its mirror needs to be aligned properly. This is more complicated than you might think. The James Webb team at NASA will need to individually calibrate each of the telescope's mirror panels. Second, it will need to get all of the rest of its instruments prepped for the litany of scientific work and commissions it will have to conduct over the course of its lifespan. John Durning is the deputy project manager at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center for the James Webb Space Telescope. When Durning was interviewed by Space.com, he said that those 18 mirror segments will have to essentially perform as one mirror. I should also say that Webb will start turning on instruments in the next week or so. And then, after we get into L2, as the instruments get cold enough, they, the engineers, are going to turn on all the various instruments. But now that the telescope is finally in space, what kind of scientific discoveries do we have to look forward to? Thanks to Webb's sun shield coupled with its great distance from good old Sol, the telescope will have plenty of darkness to operate in infrared wavelengths, like some kind of high-tech rogue. Infrared wavelengths are useful for astronomers because they allow them to see through all that dust that we have in the Milky Way. This will help with direct observations of exoplanets, or even with something that we've never really been able to see in high detail, the inside of distant galaxies. To me, that's one of the most exciting things, to peer into the inner workings of distant galaxies, or maybe even see extragalactic exoplanets. Or how about those elusive exomoons in our own galaxy? I'm dying to know how exoplanet formation differs in these places. Will they have hot Jupiters, super-Earths, or will we find some new, baffling orbital mechanics to unravel? The James Webb Space Telescope has some impressive tools for getting these jobs done. Specifically, though, four instruments will work to image celestial objects in visible near-infrared and mid-infrared wavelengths from 0.6 to 28.5 micrometers. The telescope also sports a guidance sensor and spectrograph, which is actually one instrument, along with a camera that operates in near-infrared and a mid-infrared instrument to cap it all off. Durning went on to tell Space.com that each instrument has their own set of milestones that will be challenging to calibrate them once they reach temperature, making sure they get it all aligned. As of January 11th, mirror deployment has already started. From here, as of writing this script on January 14th, We've got about six to eight days to wait until alignment of the mirrors is complete, barring any complications with the process. Let's hope there aren't any, but as the fictional men and women at NASA in the Martians said, space is dangerous. But from there, we'll have another three months before alignment is fine-tuned enough for what the researchers call 
first light. This will be when the telescope takes its first test image, which will be part of the final configuration of the mirrors. Much like when you get a new camera and start fiddling with the settings, those first images may be blurry before calibration is finished. NASA says that this is normal. Even the camera that I'm using had to be toyed with until I got the right focus and color balance, and I'm sure that there's more that I could do to improve upon what I've got. And it'll take a lot of testing to get James Webb, quote unquote, just right. So, according to Durning, when speaking to Space.com on the matter, right around day 120 is when we think the entire telescope will be aligned. So, I guess you can expect another update somewhere around April 24th, even if it's in my forthcoming video series Science News Thursdays, though April 24th falls on a Sunday, so who knows. Blurry images may not seem like a big deal to you or me, but to the general public there's been something of a sour history. When Hubble launched in 1990, a series of blurry images due to an engineering fault led to something of a scandal in the media. It was really embarrassing. To put this in perspective, because I was probably just barely learning to say words more complex than sewer in Ninja Turtles, Pizza dudes got 30 seconds. The Hubble Space Telescope cost $1.5 billion and had been in the building phase for 12 years and speculated about for 45 years. Launching with an artifact on one of its mirrors meant that 40% of Hubble's scientific work was suddenly not viable until the mirror could be physically repaired. And $1.5 billion in 1990 would be somewhere around $3.1 billion in 2022. Thanks, inflation. People blame NASA, and it looked like it would take nearly three years and even more Benjamins to fix the problem. And the solution was to add another mirror on top of the one with the defect. Only the defect on the new mirror would be in the opposite direction. This effectively canceled out the defect entirely, allowing the telescope to function normally. But that is a complicated and risky maneuver in low Earth orbit, where Hubble currently sits. But if something were to happen with James Webb, oof, getting to L2 would be a lot more costly. So, let's just hope that nothing goes wrong and we don't end up with a piece of glorified space junk orbiting in one of our Lagrange points. Because I can just imagine the outcry if that were to happen. There's been criticism even with how many delays James Webb went through. But now, considering the great risk involved in this project, hopefully we all understand why those delays were ultimately necessary. And hoping to get ahead of this kind of criticism, Jane Rigby, an operations project scientist at Goddard for the James Webb Project, told Space.com, we start with the mirrors off by millimeters, and we're driving them to be aligned to within less than the size of a demonetization virus, two tens of nanometers. It's this very deliberate process that is time consuming. Just so everybody knows, the first images that we take, this telescope is not ready out of the box. The first images are going to be ugly. It's going to be blurry. We'll have 18 of these little images all over the sky, and we have to drive that into one telescope. I like to think of it as if it's like we have 18 mirrors that are right now like prima donnas, all doing their own thing, singing their own tune and whatever key they're in. We have to make them work like a chorus, and that is a methodical, laborious process. I think it's admirable to try to get ahead of the sort of criticism that is most assuredly going to come from the media outlets. But this project has been 30 years in the making, with $10 billion spent. There is no doubt in my mind that some less than forward-thinking pundits are going to look at those first images and say, We paid $10 billion for this? With absolutely zero self-awareness. Let's just hope that there aren't any issues with those mirrors once James Webb reaches L2. Because if it does, oh boy. We'll be in for a bumpy meteor ride for sure. But enough about what could go wrong. What will the first image targets for James Webb be once it's fully functional? Once it's finally ready to go, James Webb will be taking what Rigby tells Space.com is a series of wow images meant to show off what this telescope can really do. The first real target for Webb will more than likely be released to the media in the very near future, but you can bet your ass that it'll include the Large Magellanic Cloud and some of our more recognizable stars, like Betelgeuse? Let's get a badass picture of that before it goes supernova, please. And then we have the unraveling of the cosmic curtain to look forward to, the peering back into the void, where the blind idiot god Azathoth lies in wait dreaming us into life. But once we see it, and it sees us, and it wakes up. We don't. That sounded better in my head. But in all seriousness, much like Hubble was able to peer back to the earliest forming galaxies, 
James Webb will be doing something very similar. An article back in 2020 sold the space telescope's abilities by saying that its massive mirror of prima donnas would be capable of gathering the faintest light at the distant reaches of our universe. This is very old light. Webb's mirrors are made out of beryllium instead of glass, the same substance that powered the protector in Galaxy Quest. Never give up, never surrender. Beryllium is stronger than steel and lighter than aluminum, and the telescope is coated in a thin layer of 24 karat gold. This allows the telescope to reflect 98% of infrared light that hits it. There's a lot more to it, but the telescope should be able to peer back 13.7 billion years in mere seconds once it's fully operational. And only time will tell what we see. As a huge astronomy fan, I can't wait to see those images, and it'll be even better to be able to share in all of that excitement with all of you who make up this community. If you dug this content, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and share this video with someone who loves astronomy and science. And hey, if you dig Hubble, check out this video on how Hubble's ultra deep field came to be and how it works. And wow, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.